arguably uh, one of the worst performances under the David Moyes reign at West Ham. Uh, Brighton 4, West Ham 0. Um, I mean, we'll talk about David Moyes and this whole situation with the board and, and, and that, that sort of stuff in a minute. But before we do, Riley, I want to ask you about the game. We haven't spoken about it yet. I dread to get, you know, think what you what you'll get your thoughts on this one. But yeah, well, what, what, what did you make of it? I mean, it's such a contrast, isn't it? 4 0 against Forest last week, 4 0 against Brighton this week. I mean, mm. I feel like Brighton is just six point at six points a season that we just have to admit that we lose. You know, yeah. it just seems like when we used to play Man City at the London Stadium, they used to spank us 5 0 or 5 1. And we used to just say to ourselves, well, it's City. So it is what it is. I feel like that is what Brighton is for us because we just seem to regress every single time we play them. And the defending was just so clumsy. I mean, mm. the first goal, Ben Johnson gets absolutely turned and Jared Bowen just runs into him, gives Bataka a hug and brings him down. It's, uh, that just sets the tempo for the game. And then, you know, the corner, we lose the first header. Johnson leaves his man uh, at the back post unmarked. They're just such sloppy, sloppy goals. And mm. I mean, obviously going forward, we didn't really have much going about us either. But Brian is such a well-drilled side. And now that we're a side that try and break teams down as opposed to hit them on the counter, it's so difficult to get through a side like Brighton's and it's no wonder that they managed to spank us 4-0. But yeah, like I said, I feel like Brighton is just six points lost every season. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm not sure what the curse is all about, but it's it's no surprise to me. But I, I, I did think we had a small chance, you know, after seeing how well we played against Forest, more or less the same side that played against Forest, played against Brighton, mm. but such a contrast in performance. Yeah, it was. I, I, I was surprised. I, I mean, I, I mean, everyone was sort of saying to me, um, a few people on Twitter and what have you, have been saying, "Well, what really? You were that shocked, were you? You know, the, the, you know, you, we've been bad all season." But I, I was shocked. I, I, I thought we played well against Forest. I thought we played really well against Man United. I thought we were very unlucky. I mean, I know we kind of bottled it at the end, but I thought ultimately, I thought we, seventy odd minutes, I thought we were the better team by quite a way. Actually, I thought we played really well. Yeah. So to go to Brighton in that manner. Um, and play in such a terrible... Uh, uh, do you know what really done me in, right? It wasn't... I mean, the scoreline itself, obviously, is infuriating, but it was the manner of the, the performance, the effort. They, just, they didn't even really look interested. Funnily enough, I, before we started recording this, I was just looking on Twitter, and someone's put up a video. Of, I don't know if you've seen it, the players warming up before the game. Um, and you've got a physio, he's doing some work with them and just getting their, you know, getting them fre- you know, ready for the game, sort of match ready. And you can just sort of see the attitude's just wrong. Like, Bowen's basically walking around they just look so defeated before the game. And, it, and you look at it thinking that it, it just stinks. It, the whole performance stunk to me um, from everybody, from the, from the backroom staff all the way through to the team. I thought they were really poor. I, don't, I can't even pick out one performer that I'd even say played well. I thought Declan Rice was poor. I thought all of them were really, really poor um, and got what we deserved. I mean, as you say, that the Brighton curse carries on once again. We did... I, I'm so upset by it, and, and if it's one of those performances and one of those results, I've actually seemed to be getting worse as the days going on. I, I was hoping I might be calming down and thinking, actually, trying to pick out, you know, like you try and pick out some positives from a game and think, okay, it was a bad result, but this was a, it's just something to take, like you know, something from. But I can't take anything from that performance. It was literally nothing. I thought it was just such a bad, bad day, and I'm getting a bit fed up with it all. Really fed up with the club, fed up with um, the, the players. I'm sick of hearing for the same comments every week from our manager sick of that man keep repeating the fact that we should all be so grateful for the years we've had under him have been so brilliant if he carries on that boring narrative i'm so he's been saying that for months after months weeks after week just stop going on about it and he always changes it i'm, I'm seeing i'm getting angry already but he changes it every week one minute it's a year then it's a year and a half now he's saying three years west ham fan have had great three years where are these three years come from it doesn't mean three years one good season david Moore he's done one that's all he's delivered. I don't care what they say. Yeah, but we finished seventh under in the second season. But we were shocking for the second half of it. It was only we were, the only reason we finished seventh was because we accumulated enough points in the early stage of the season that we managed to. And let's be honest, we scraped that seventh, didn't we? You know, we were awful towards the end. Funnily enough, at Brighton when we got battered three one by them, and we were awful that day. Um, and, and just but somehow we got the Conference League. Um, yeah, really infuriating, mate. I, I was, as I say, I can't say anything good about it. But um, the, obviously, the talk after the game was then Moyes' future. There's a lot of question marks now. Again, raised, is he going to be removed from the job? Are they going to get someone else in? I, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't think that's going to happen now. I, I don't think the club would, would change anything. I don't even think, I, and I, I just go as far as saying, if we were to lose every match the rest of the season now and get relegated, Moyes would still be our manager at the end of it. I genuinely believe that. He'd be sacked probably in the summer. But I reckon they will stick with him right to the end. This is going. This has got Avram Grant right season written all over it. That sort of just 
we're sticking with you by hook or by crook. We don't care. And we'll wait until the relegation is confirmed. I don't think we're going to get relegated, by the way. I still think we're going to get survive it. But that only on the basis that there are three worst teams in West Ham. But let's be honest, just like just there's, there's no one jumping out at me at the moment thinking well, we're miles better than them. Like you just think well, we might just uh, get enough points. But um, yeah, uh, XWH employees come out then, mate, and said that the, 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 the club are backing uh, David Moyes. He looks like it's come from right from the top. So I can only guess it's uh, one man in particular that's, that said those words. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Would you be uh, changing the manager now or do you think look, it's too late? Just got to stick with him. What's your feelings? Well, I mean, what? We've got like 12 games left of the season. I think mm. it's about 12 games. How much of an impact is a manager going to come and do in 12 games? Um, it, It's difficult to say, but I mean, you talk about lack of effort and you talk about, you know, from the club downwards, it's simply because Moyes has lost the dressing room for it, from what I can mm. see. Um, the players are playing for the club, but not necessarily for the manager. Um, I'm sure some of them will be hoping they can actually outlast the manager. Um, and I think some of the some of the comments made after the game about you know having a, having a pop at the fans, I think is is pretty fucking disgusting. Because I, mean, I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw the David Moyes interview, but he basically insinuated that that if you left the game early or, or weren't happy with a four 0 performance away at the Amex, then you're basically a plastic fan who's only been uh, with us and enjoying the time with us for the last two and a half years of of the good yeah. times, mm. which I just think is disgusting because we've got such an amazing away support. Um, they always show up, you know, train mm. strikes, they always show up in the numbers. Um, I think to have a pop at the away fans is is just been disgusting, to be honest with you. And it wasn't really heightened by the fact that Declan Rice did it as well. Um, all I will yeah. say is, all I will say is after a game, you come out and say, oh, it's not good enough, we should play better. You get berated. Mm. You come out after a game and say, well, stick with us. You know, we're trying our best. You know, we, we know we're winning to do wrong. You get berated. There's not really a lot you can say after the game. Mm. But having a pop of the fans is just, it's just not right, is it? And uh, No, I, 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 yeah, so there's two points there then. So first of all, let's focus on the Moyes comment. So I agree. I, I, I Like I've just alluded to, it, it kind of riles me every time he comes out and says these speeches about the, the last few years and how grateful our fans should be. It's very boring. And and, and what I get to, get to me with David Moyes is, is that he's got no excuses, in my opinion, right? He acts like, for a start, that he kind of compares West Ham to like a Sunderland situation or a Burnley situation as if to sort of say, well, what do you, what do you expect? What do you expect? You be, you've you've been given nearly two hundred million pounds in the summer, mate, to spend on a team that you selected. So please stop this narrative of that you have sort of you're inheriting this shitty team and struggling. And well, yeah, what more do you expect? Because that, that's the narrative he seems to spin quite a fair bit. It really riles me. And then, as I've said, the other bit annoys me is this whole well, West Ham fans. Well, they're, they're used to it. They, you know, that's what you get when you get top six for the last few years. You know, that's what you get. We haven't had top six for the last few years. We we had one good season, as I've said, and then the second season did all right because we had a good start to the second first part of the season. The second half was dreadful. The whole of 2022 was shit, and so is 2023. Let's be honest, it's not much better. So I really get quite tired of him keep rolling this narrative that we've had such great success and we're just having a bit of a blip. That's how he kind of tries to keep shoehorning this situation. Um, and yeah, I agree. I don't understand why he's making comments about the fans because the fans have actually been really good to David Moyes and the team. They, I mean, I, he's the first manager, I think, since, well, I can't remember, since who it's in, probably Stavon Bilic. I don't even know if Bilic had this, actually, where, where they were singing um, David Moyes' Claret and Blue Army. You know, super David Moyes. And he's, like, he's, he's had a lot of backing from this football club, including the fans, including David Sullivan. He's backed him to the hill, giving him a lot of money, he brought in the players that he wanted. He wanted Paqueta. He wanted Skamaka. He got these players in. So to, to keep playing this story that he's kind of like, well, what would you expect? It's very, very tiring. And I do wonder, I'd like to know really what David Sutherland thinks of it, because I certainly wouldn't be very impressed handing nearly £200 million to a manager. And then, this, then during the season, he's got all going, well, what do you expect? You know, West Ham aren't going to be up the top six every season. It's like, well, but that's what we expected, David. That was the point. And this is the same manager, don't forget, that not long ago, when we were early in the season and struggling down the bottom, he kind of made a quip about being in a European chase and sort of went to the press, well, yeah, we're not battling relegation, we're fighting for Europe this season. So he's changed his narrative quite, he, he sort of chops and changes. So it's, it's one of the things that go, he, he was sort of making a big spin to the fan base about us being a top side and we want to be up there every season. This is where a club of West Ham should be. And then when things aren't going right, he kind of, it's not like he pretends he never said that. And I don't know, mate. And I think once you start calling out the fans, you're in dangerous waters, then, you know, you're going down the Allardyce route. And 
And it's only going to go one way with Moyes, I think, let's be honest. I thought he's not going to be our manager for the long run. I'd be stunned if he's here in two years. Um, I think he's probably coming to, I think he maybe knows that. Maybe that's why he's having these comments and getting a bit flippant. Maybe he's quite aware that things are going to change. Whether we stay up or not, you know, he's probably thinking, well, I can say, but I don't think the club will keep me on longer. Um, the Declan Rice one, though, was, yeah, like you've said there, it's a strange one, the Rice one, because I don't really know who he's talking to. Because his words were, um, uh, when he was asked about the, the, the situation at West Ham, I think he was asked a question about the, the, the frustrations amongst the fans and, oh, David Moyes under the spotlight again. Then he went, well, you know, you've got these sort of people that are saying all that, but they're not the experts. They're not out on the pitch. So they don't, you know, I don't take no notice of it. So I kind of read that, that he was talking about maybe the media, but all the fans. But the, the second part of that, it didn't really make sense because if you listen to the whole interview, he actually was saying sorry to the fans quite a lot. And he, he kept repeating it, like, you know, we apologise to the fans, the fans worked hard to get here and all that. So I'd find it quite strange for him to then to have a dig at the fans, to go, well, yeah, they're experts. I, I don't think he meant it like that. But then the other argument is, who is he pointing the finger at? Because if he's pointing the finger at Roy Keane, who criticised him in the week or whatever, but, but Roy Keane has been there and done that. You know, Roy Keane's, you know, top midfielder, one of the best in the world at the time. So, you know, he's won Champions Leagues and things. So... I don't really know what he was aiming at. The only thing I put it down to is I think maybe Declan was just like me, like me and you, frustrated, angry. And I think he just sort of said a passing comment. I don't think he really kind of put any thought behind it. Do you remember who he was aimed at? I think it was like a parting shot, everyone. Like, well, yeah, you know, I don't listen to any of that. So I don't really like to think Declan's calling out the fans. But David Moyes, on the other hand, annoyed me because I, I, I you know, I'd like Riley just for once. Moyes or Rice or whatever, just to stand up and say, this season has been fucking shit, okay? It's been shit and we really apologise. We will get it right next season, but this season we've just got to try and stay up. Just be honest. Stop trying to point at things and blame everybody else. Just say that we've been awful, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, in terms of, yeah, I, I agree with you in terms of the manager. What, what can I do? I don't think they're going to change the manager, mate, because I don't think there's anyone available. It annoys me as well because the club are only going to go for, under Sullivan, they're only going to go for donkeys, let's be honest. They're going to go for another Moyes, aren't they? Because he's already said that he only wants a manager of Premier League experience, which again, I don't understand. Why do you need to have Premier League experience? What's the, what's the reasoning for that? Because we've done that. We've done this, don't forget, quite a lot of times now, managers with Premier League experience. It never really gets us anywhere. So I don't really know what the big, is big hoo-ha is about Premier League experience. I've got to ask you, mate, if you could change your manager, though, if you were now in charge of West Ham, is there anyone in my mind, if you could get them in, realistically could get them in, who would you go for? Uh, I mean, if we're talking a dream scenario, probably someone like Vincent Company, I think, but I don't think he'd leave Burnley, and I think that's a good mm. project for him. Yeah, Could be an exciting one next year in the Premier League. Um, Michael Carrick as well, I mean, local lads, I think that, that would be kind of interesting to see him back, but uh, he is somewhat unproven at Middlesbrough, but I just I don't know. There's no all the experienced managers out there. Like like someone like Bielsa would be quite interesting, but he would I don't trust him to stay uh, keep us up. The only I, I think yeah. we're going to stay up this season, but purely because I think David Moyes and the quality of the squad is able to beat the teams around us. That's mm. the only reason I think we'll be, like I think we should beat Southampton. We should beat Bournemouth. Very hit or miss whether we beat. I think we played Wolves twice already potentially, but We've got Villa the, next to me. Yeah, be easy. Villa. I mean Villa. That that's that's probably a loss in my book to be honest. But we normally really? play okay against. Yeah, I mean we normally play okay against Villa, but uh, I'm not sure they're a bit hit or miss. But teams like you know Leicester and Leeds, mm. we should we should be beating the teams around us. In which case we we should stay up. That's the only reason that I think uh, we will potentially stay up this season, but. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see David Moyes getting sacked. I think there's 12 games to go. Mm. Almost seems like a like Sean Dyche last season for the Burnley. Like they sort of just let him, you know, let him carry out the season, let him uh, see what he could do, and then all of a sudden they just went. Oh, there's like 10 games to go. Let, we might as well just change the manager and see what happens. And you know, they ended up getting relegated. So I don't know. I in terms of David Moyes, I just think, like you say, he, he he's promised uh, that he's going to take West Ham to. The next stage in the Premier League, he's promised that he's going to take us to sixth to seventh, that we should get used to European nights. And then all of a sudden, when we've gotten used to European nights, he's sitting there saying, well, well we're only West Ham. So I don't know why you, I don't know why you're mm. all complaining so much. We're like a mid-table team. It's like, well, you've gauged us and you've set us up for this amazing, you know, West Ham reroute that we're going to be around sixth or seventh, that European football is going to be every single week, that we're going to be, you know, a proper run football club. And then all of a sudden mm. we're like, hold on, David, I thought we were a proper run. He's like, well, 
I just said that. We talk about <laughs> we're a mid-table teammate. You should be happy with no relegation. It just seems yeah. stupid. Like you say, it'd be nice if they if Moyes just came out and said, to be honest with you, this season's a write-off. We're gonna, you know, mm. try really hard to recalibrate, stay in the Premier League, and we'll be back next season. And he mm. just sort of thinks, I mean, because most that's how most West Ham feel, fans feel. They just want the season over and fucking done with already. I, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty like 18 games in I wanted this done already. Um, it just seems strange, but I think. I don't think he's going to get sacked at this point. And it, it wouldn't make much sense to get sacked at this point. But if they're not looking to offload him in the summer, then I, I think that's a really big mistake. Absolutely. I, I tell you, I think that is the mindset of the football club throughout, which is, it is, it is what it is. And they've kind of, they've, they've sort of shown their hand quite early, didn't they, with Moyes? Because they, you know, even when things were very, very bad, when we had a lot of time to deal with it, i.e. Uh, the World Cup was a prime perfect time to change the manager they didn't take it they've had an opportunity not long ago where um they had a bit of a breather with a cup, you know with cup games and stuff and they had a ch- ch- chance they had to change the manager they didn't take it it's also a period coming up now i think i think after the villa game isn't there i think it's like a three-week gap with premier league football i believe um so th- that's another opportunity but i don't like you say i don't think they'd take that yeah they, they may do if we got hammered say by villa at home and we lost in the in midweek they may then have to do something because they might just think well all is lost we might as well change but i don't think they will and like you say i actually do think we'll still survive i think that i think that's the difference i think because we've got enough quality in the side and i think we might just might just get us over the line in terms of playing these teams at home a home form is what's going to keep us up because we've been pretty decent at home to be fair on the grand scheme of it we've not been too bad that's probably been better but like you say, I, 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 and then the, the, the question is, would you can keep him? Will, will the board then go, well, well, look, it's been a bad season? Because the thing is, they seem to be buying into the Moyes narrative quite a lot. They, they are buying, you know, they're, they're believing a lot of what he's saying, um, it appears. And I, and I don't really get it. I don't understand his narrative. I don't get why they're not clocking the fact that he's not right. It's just, it's, these are not facts. This whole narrative of being, you know, three great years under Moyes and it's just a bad spell it's just so wrong it's so so wrong in every level it's been bad for a long time um i mean let's be honest we had a bad season last season but the europa league paper over the cracks and it's almost like he's using it again with the conference league well we're, we're in the knockout stages of europe you know what you mean he's using it again he's trying to go yeah but we're doing all right we're doing all right uh, you know i i mean i don't think they're i mean i don't think they're deluded i'm sure they are aware that you know we are in a relegation battle but they're trying to put this spin on it that we're always expecting this difficult season um, my gut feeling is that he will stay to the end and I, and then I'd like to think that by the summer then they may then decide to make a change. But knowing our owners, mate, and knowing David Sullivan, if he can keep someone on a cheat, he'll do it. And I think if he keeps it up, he'll probably will give Moyes another go again next season. And But under the narrative that he obviously has to do very well. But yeah, it's, it's worrying times, mate, isn't it? It's, it's so sad to see. Cause like you, I've, I've kind of just been wanting the season to end pretty much after the, when the ball kicked off. I've really not enjoyed a minute of it. And I think that Brighton performance that epitomised everything this season has stood for. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it would kind of be strange to give Moyes to the end of the season and then not give him at least a start of next season to, you know, to actually do what he needs to do. Because at the end of the day, Sullivan's investing in Moyes as a project to reignite the sixth or seventh hopes. But mm. personally, for me, I just think we need a new manager. We need someone in. I just think to myself, has David Moyes size got enough to keep us up this season? Mm. You know, just to beat the other sides around us. And I think yes. And I think I, I wouldn't want to jeopardize that by getting another manager in so for me mm. David Moyes is I would say a safe bet not not necessarily a safe bet but potentially a safer bet than another manager so mm. I think for now we just kind of have to you know lay in the bed that has been made for us and just sort of accept that David Man- uh, David Moyes is going to be the manager to the end of the season but yeah it's been a write-off of a season it, I mean it was always going to be a tougher season with so many players coming in play you know someone like Mark Noble leaving the club it was always going to be difficult but uh, we shouldn't be where we are right now. Absolutely, mate. Couldn't agree more, mate. It's, it's a terrible situation. And we've just got to hope and pray that, uh, you know, we've got enough this season to stay up because, bloody hell, mate, it's one season that we, we want to forget fast. Yeah. 